Hello everybody. In this episode, we're going to be talking about a very specific and unique tool in the plumbing world, and that is your PEX crimpers. Uh, this tool goes with your PEX crimp system. Uh, I don't want to get too much into the PEX pipe itself because this episode is about the crimpers. But uh, I got some laid out here for us. This is the PEX crimp style system. As you can see, there are these little fittings here that direct the pipe in different directions, and they are held together with these little copper crimp rings. It basically goes on there, smashes down around it, and uh, it catches these little barbs on your fitting. And that's what holds your pressure. This is a pressurized potable water system. Uh, so let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about some history here. Uh, PEX was developed uh, in the late 1950s and the late 1960s. This system was developed. It took several years to develop it. It wasn't just one day, oh, July 17th, uh, 1952, PEX was invented. No, it was developed over a period of time uh, to meet a need, and that need was radiant heating systems. Uh, beforehand, they were using copper, and in a radiant heating system, uh, you're circulating the same hot water through that system over and over again, and copper, which was the norm, uh, it will corrode over time. Uh, PEX, which is polyethylene tubing, it's a, it's a polymer, it's a plastic, flexible tubing, uh, it doesn't corrode. Uh, it's resistant to all kinds of different things. Uh, it can freeze, but uh, it, it doesn't break. It can break if in a freezing condition, but I've never really seen any pop when it freezes. It just freezes and it thaws out and works perfectly fine. Copper, if it freezes, it'll bust. Uh, the CPVC that plumbers used for a while there, it'll bust. So uh, that's what this was developed for, was for a better potable water system. Now, we didn't start immediately using it. You really didn't see this stuff show up in America until the mid 70s. And it was there to replace the copper. But us plumbers and residential, we didn't jump right on this. Uh, we went for CPVC. Now, CPVC has some problems too. It can freeze and crack. Uh, it's gotta be glued together, so you have to wait on glue to dry. With this crimp system, once you crimp that ring on that fitting, you're good to go. You're ready to pressurize. You don't have to wait 30 minutes for glue to dry before you can shoot the water to it. It's, it's ready to roll. But uh, CPVC was widely used uh, in the 80s and the 90s. Uh, it wasn't really until the mid-2000s, the 20-0s, that uh, you start seeing PEX really replacing both that copper and that CPVC and it was about 10 years ago that uh, we here made the switch permanently over to PEX and we don't we don't use CPVC and we use a very very little copper um, but that's kind of the history behind it there um, it's a fairly new product but uh, all right, the tool itself. Now, I, I always jump into parts next. There's a lot of moving little parts in here, but basically you've got your handles, your body, and your jaws. And then there is a calibration screw here. These things will wear out over time. They hold up pretty well, but they have to be calibrated or your crimps uh, will start failing on you. Uh, so. It's pretty simple and there's a linkage in here that connects this. One handle is fixed, the other is the one that's doing all the work for you. But they will lock back like that and you see your jaws are open there and then they close and then you can crimp it. Uh, crimping is a two-handed procedure. It, it takes some strength to really pop those things on there. Um, now when you're running this PEX crimp style system, and I say it that way because there's other style systems. There's the press, there's push fittings, uh, various different things out there that use the same type of tubing, the same polyethylene, but it's a different 
uh, connections. It's different fittings. But you will need some tools to go with this. You're going to need some cutters, some ratchet cutters is the ones I prefer. You don't have to use the ratchet cutters. Uh, they have some just non-ratcheting, some straight ones that you can use that work just fine too. Uh, a tool I like to have, you don't really see a lot of people with these, but it's a crimp ring cutter. This is designed to cut these crimp rings off if you've made a mistake. Now, on your little poly fittings like this, it's not worth your time to try to save this. Plus, this does have a blade, and you can cut down into those grooves, and it's just not worth your time. What I keep these guys for, uh, your big stuff, your expensive, like your valve bodies here, your brass valve bodies. Um, this is not something, oh, I made a mistake and you're going to throw this away. This, this is a lot more expensive than one of these little guys. So you're going to want to reuse these uh, if you can. And that's where the crimp ring cutters come into play. Uh, I use them a lot here in the training center because we're rebuilding things and we're taking things apart and we're putting things back together. Um, so there's our little brief history on PEX. Um, there's our parts. Let's, uh, let's bring this camera in close, get down here on the table, and I'm going to show you how to pop a couple of these together. All right, so here we are. I've got the two most popular sizes that we use in residential construction. Now, PEX does come in three sizes. It comes in three-eighths, half-inch, three-quarter, and one-inch. But pretty much we're going to have three-quarter and half-inch on a residential construction job. Every now and again, we'll use uh, the one inch, but I've never really seen uh, the three eighths used. Now for each size, you have to have your own crimper to go for that size. Half inch can't do three quarter, three quarter can't do half inch. They're uniquely sized. So the first thing you're gonna do here is you're gonna get your pipe and you're gonna cut it to length with your cutters. And then you put the crimp ring on first. And what you're going to do is leave uh, a little edge. They say a dime's width worth of that edge poking out uh, beyond the crimp ring. Now, PEX does come in three colors. This is white, but it also comes in red and blue for hot and cold water. And then, of course, we use the white to poke out of the wall because you don't want to see a bright blue pipe or a red pipe poking out of the wall behind a toilet or something. Now, your fittings have these little barbs on it. And that's what's going to help grip this pipe. So you're going to put your fitting in the end. Sometimes they're kind of hard and you got to really push them. But make sure it goes past all three barbs to that little collar right there. Uh, don't crimp it like this because that, that can mess up on you. That can blow apart uh, and cost you and your company a whole lot of money. So push it all the way on there uh, like that. Remember, check it before you crimp it a dime's width. And then that fittings all the way up and uh, you got that ring right there where you want it. And then how your crimpers work, uh, I normally just put them down on my knee or the table and you can cock them back like that with one hand. And there you go. Your, your jaws are open. You're ready to go. You're going to line this up. You're going to line that up on your crimp ring. You want to be that crimp ring right in the center of those jaws. Let go of it. It'll clamp down on it uh, and it'll just kind of hang there. Uh, and then you're gonna you're gonna crimp it, and this is a two-handed procedure. Uh, it it's not supposed to be easy because you want to press that down. And when you're done, um, it's gonna leave a little mark right there on your ring to show you that it's it's been crimped. It's, the tool just leaves a mark. Now that is there. That's a solid connection. You're not waiting on glue to dry or anything like that. Once you make your last crimp on your plumbing system, uh, you're good to go. You can pressurize it. Uh, no wait time or anything like that. So there's your three quarter crimped on there like that. Um, the, something else I want to talk about, all your crimpers come with what they call a go gauge. Uh, they used to be uh, different, they used to be a go no go gauge and it had two different sides to it, but they finally figured out, well we don't need the no go part, we just give them the go part. So um, they are labeled across the top, but you're going to check 
your three quarter and it should just touch and go over that. If it doesn't go in there, you don't have a good crimp. If it's not, if that ring didn't smash down all the way to fit into your go gauge, you're gonna have to adjust it and calibrate it and we'll get to that in a second. Uh, the next one is your half inch. This works pretty much the same. You're gonna get your pipe, you're gonna measure and you're gonna cut it to length. And same steps, same method. Get you a crimp ring, put it on there, get that dimes width of the pipe exposed outside of the crimp ring and then you're gonna take your fitting. These are couplings, but there are all kinds of different fittings that can get you all kinds of different places. This is the same deal. You're gonna push that all the way up. Don't leave it hanging halfway off. All the way up, all three barbs. And then before you crimp it, check it. Make sure you got that dimes width and everything looks good. Same method here. Uh, I like to do this on my knee or on the table or something. Cock it back with one hand like that and then line it up. Oops, see, I moved it, you see? So make sure uh, that's right where you want it. Set it in those jaws, dead in the center. Lock it down, it's locked down, and give her a good squeeze. And it will make like a little pop noise when those handles hit together, so you know that you're all the way crimped down. And there it is, and there is a little mark right there where it's crimped. Here again, no glue drying, uh, no wait time. Once you make your last crimp on your plumbing system, you're ready to go and you can use the same go gauge on the half inch and it's labeled uh, and you wanna make sure that that fits into that half inch slot. Um, if it doesn't quite go, if it doesn't fit in there, you're gonna have to adjust your uh, crimpers. So let's uh, clean up here and I'm, I'm gonna show you how to calibrate these things. How to calibrate your crimpers if it did not pass the go gauge test. If it didn't pass, which means it was too big to fit in whatever size you were looking. These are my three quarters here. Uh, there is a little hexagon right here and it's got numbers around it. It starts at zero through five. When they're brand new, you're gonna be on zero and the little line will be pointing to zero. You're gonna adjust these one step at a time, going from zero to one to two to three to four to five. And it changes uh, the pitch on this linkage back here, which crimps you down harder and harder. These things do wear out over time, but it takes several, several hundred crimps before you're really going to need to adjust them, but you do need to calibrate these things uh, often, at least testing. Uh, our company policy is check your first crimp of the job and check your last crimp of the job with your go gauge. Uh, now, if you failed, now these are brand new, so they're on zero. If you failed, you have to turn this to where that line is on one. Or if it's on one, you gotta go to two. If it's on two, you gotta go to three, and so on. How do you do that? Well, you flip it over. You see, there's a little snap ring right here. Now, these are brand new, and they're probably gonna give me some trouble, so bear with me. You need a screwdriver, a little flathead. You're gonna get right in that little snap ring right there, and you're gonna pop that out by twisting that and try not to shoot it across the room. And like I said, these are new. They've never been adjusted before, so it's gonna give me a hard time. That little uh, snap ring, don't, uh, don't lose these. They're not really easy to replace unless you've got some old busted crimpers laying around you can steal parts of, off of. Now, you have to push this pin outward and it's not gonna go because like I said, these are brand new and you probably need a pair of pliers. You might just be able to push on it like that and the little hexagon will pop out. Now, you take your little channel lock pliers, grab it 
and hopefully it's far enough out, but if it's not, you might have to give it a little tug. Don't pull that all the way out. Don't pull that pin all the way out. If you do, that linkage is gonna fall apart on you. Uh, there's a couple of little pieces in there. It can be put back together, but if you're in the field and you drop it in the dirt or the pine straw, uh, it's gone. So be careful, don't pull this all the way out. And then you would rotate this around to the next level. Um, and then you're gonna push it back together. You might have to wiggle your handle a little bit to get it snapping in there, uh, but every time you do this, these handles are gonna get farther and farther apart. It's just how the calibration works. And of course, don't forget to put your snap ring back in. Um, like I said, these are new as they get older it's not such a big problem. But there it is, it's back um, to the way it was and you are ready to go. Now, these I'm gonna have to set back because they're brand new and they were calibrated right, but that's it. Just remember, it comes with the go gauge for a reason. Uh, check your crimps, check the first one, check the last one. And the other thing is, this guy, once you go all the way around to five, uh, you'll have that five, but once you don't pass anymore with your go gauge on five, these are wore out. They're completely wore out. Now, I do know that the ones that say mill three on them, you can send these back to the manufacturer. Uh, it's a little fee they charge you and they remill all the stuff in here and they'll send you those crimpers back on zero uh, but I've never gotten to five uh, somebody always runs off with my crimpers uh, before it gets that far but that's it and then of course your half inch work the exact same way but always calibrate your crimpers you don't want to get in trouble with a busty fitting busted fitting leaky fitting um, but that's it Thanks guys, hope you learned something.